Hello everyone, my name is Carrie Barnhart and I am currently a graduate student in the Department of Animal Science at North Carolina State University. Today I am presenting my paper titled The Effects of Slow-Growing Poultry Genetics, Commercial Production versus Market Demands and the Research Behind It. The United States poultry industry has been an ever-changing market since the introduction of modernized contract growing operations in the mid-20th century. Recent concerns over welfare bullers being pushed outside of their genetic potential have brought the topic of introducing more slow-growing genetic lines back into commercial poultry production. Pressures from consumer demands have led industry companies, organizations, and professionals to contribute to the debate. While peer-reviewed research articles are still pending, industry data is being presented as evidence why slow-growing genetics would not be a smart choice in commercial boiler production. In 2015, U.S. Poultry released the economic impact of broiler production in the United States, which was $28.7 billion. According to the website NC Poultry Facts, North Carolina broiler production contributed $32 million to the economy. Modern day broilers are typically produced in a 44 day time frame. Primary breeder companies like Avigen, Cobb Vantress and Hubbard have devoted years of improving genetic lines to develop the most efficient broiler. However, the industry's efficiency has some individuals concerned of the welfare of the birds. Consumers are now questioning why genetic lines are producing bigger and heavier birds that may also decrease the animal's quality of life. Alternatively, the industry is pushing back with data that supports efficient full-bodied growth. Recent market demands have mostly come from Whole Foods Market, which in 2011 they partnered with Animal Welfare Advocacy Organization Global Animal Partnership, or GAP. According to GAP, all poultry, beef, and pork sold in Whole Foods stores must participate in their five-step rating program. This program consists of different techniques that must be followed throughout the farm to be able to qualify for different steps. Once they qualify for step one, then they can do step two, step three, all the way to step five. They even have a step five plus, which is for those farmers who go over and beyond their program requirements in order to improve the welfare of their birds on their farm. In 2016, GAP released a statement that is, quote, its intention to require only slow-growing chicken breeds by 2024 for certification for all levels of its five-step rating program due to the unresolvable welfare issues inherent in fast-growing breeds of chicken. When they released this statement in March of 2016, the Whole Foods Market fully supported it also adding that all of the uh, chicken meat in their store would come from slow-growing genetic lines by 2024. Now, it's no secret that over the past decade, the public has been more interested in where and how their food is being raised. This increase of curiosity has put a lot of pressure on the ag industry to answer many questions from people who are several generations removed from ag production. Also, with the digital age of our society, many individuals, especially the younger generation, are very quick to believe everything they read online, even if it's not from a reputable source. This has made factual statements about agriculture even more difficult to share and easy to criticize in today's culture. While some animal welfare activists suggest that slow-growing genetics should be in the entire industry, the industry is suggesting that it should just be another option for choices for the consumers. Certain animal welfare activists say that the data released by the industry offers little backup to its conclusions. It was not peer-reviewed, does not list any authors, and does not appear to be cross-referenced in any of the calculations. 
However, the Vice President of Communications of the National Chicken Council, Mr. Tom Super, stated that there were plans to pursue more formal presentation and publication of the studies in a peer-reviewed forum to validate the research. Um, he also stated that the study's intent was not to answer all questions about broiler production, but to specifically look at the economic and environmental air impacts of slow growing versus conventionally raised chickens. Commercial poultry production specializes in producing a very efficient bird. High feed conversions, better diets, and stronger genetic lines have all come together to create the modern broiler. Commercial birds no longer need to scavenge for food in hopes of finding sources to fuel their muscle growth. As more modern genetic lines of chickens have been established, they have certainly dominated commercial production for increased efficiency and more economical growth. Niche markets like pasture-raised poultry and organic production have been seeking out slow-growing birds for several years due to increased production for those different types of growing environments. The issue that the commercial poultry production has with utilizing slow growing poultry genetics is that they would have less efficient feed ratios. There would be added expenses for labor and housing costs and a larger environmental impact. This announcement last year from Whole Foods certainly had a lot of industry leaders start looking back at slow growing poultry genetics. A recent study by J. Powell's et al studied four breeds of chicken that were given a commercial diet compared to a scavenger diet. There were two breeds that were typical fast-growing breeds and two breeds that were typical slow-growing breeds. According to this study, the cob birds, which is a typical fast-growing breed, was able to gain more weight regardless if it was eating a commercial diet or a scavenger diet than any of the other three breeds tested. This concludes that while the diet is very important into the bird's um, production, it still goes back to the genetic capabilities of the bird to be able to produce at its maximum potential. This is Table 1, which was released from the National Chicken Council in August of 2016, which is from data collected by Lanco Animal Health. They released this table in response to Whole Foods and the public asking why there are not more slow growing birds in the commercial poultry industry. This is the data that the National Chicken Council released and animal welfare activists say it's not enough because it isn't peer reviewed. Um, so Mr. Super did state that more peer reviewed research articles are being formed at this moment and will hopefully be released soon in response to uh, animal welfare with fast growing genetics on commercial operations. Feel free to read over this table, but I do want to point out some highlights that I feel are important. Um, first of all, the number of cycles per year. Conventional birds, again, are typically produced in a 44-day time frame, so you're able to rotate about six flocks per farm, whereas slow growing would be less than five flocks. The amount of feed would increase um, by 34% for slow growing birds and that is per pound of prime meat. And the amount of water increase would be 40%. And of course, you're having more manure increase, which would be 53%. Overall, the cost would increase by 49% by producing slow growing genetics on commercial operations. But regardless of what the industry releases, this is a business opportunity. It is a potential niche market for folks that are interested in paying the premium price for an inefficient bird. Um, as an example of this, primary breeder giant Avagen just recently hired a new general manager who is going to organize their slow growing genetic line segment in preparation for upcoming market changes. And this occurred in January of this year. As far as research goes, there has been quite a bit of studies done to look at modern poultry lines versus the um, older genetic versions just to compare and contrast what's going on. Um, 
So I will briefly just cover some of the research that I found on organ development, meat quality, mortality, as well as diet. Research conducted by Schmidt and colleagues shows that heritage breeds' breast muscle mass was 9% of their body weight, compared to modern genetic lines where the breast muscle mass has doubled to 18% of the bird's body weight. As you can see in figure two, the dashed line is the fast growing breeds, the um, solid line is the more heritage breeds. This same study also looked at the heart mass of the two different birds, the heritage versus the modern brawler. As you can see, the modern brawler started increasing at seven days, but then at 14 days started slacking off in compared to muscle mass, which this study concludes that perhaps with the added muscle growth, that it's taking away the growth from the heart, which in turn can lead to more um, heart issues that the birds are facing, fast growing birds are facing, just because they don't have the stronger heart to handle all of the muscle that is being produced in their body. As far as meat quality goes, I was able to find a study that was conducted in 2006 that looked at slow growing birds versus modern rollers and their different meat quality. One thing that I found interesting was they looked at the muscle pH for um, slaughter and as we all know high stress situations right before slaughter can alter the pH which leads to glycogen reduction and correlates to the quality of meat. What this study showed was that slow growing birds had intense struggling activity on the shackling lines, which then caused them to be more likely to develop fast rates of postmortem pH fall. Another study in 2012 suggested that um, selection of ultimate pH in slow growing genetic lines could alleviate some of this issue. For mortality, research shows that slow-growing birds have a much lower mortality rate and they are less likely to develop bone and joint issues due to their slower growth over a longer period of time. Another study by A. Fanatico and colleagues in 2008 also found that modern genetic lines produce more efficient birds reaching market weight in six weeks, regardless if they eat a low nutrient scavenging type diet or a conventional high nutrient diet. Proper nutrition paired with modern genetics will produce the most efficiently raised birds although the downfall is you will have roughly a 10% mortality loss and some joint issues. In conclusion, commercial poultry production has developed the most economical bird to feed our growing population. It is very efficiently produced and keeps in mind the environmental impact. However, the research has shown that slow growing poultry genetics is an excellent opportunity for a niche market in our country and around the world. There are people out there who are willing to pay more money for a inefficiently sourced bird because of the welfare aspect, the mortality, the joint issues, the list goes on and on. If they feel better and have more peace of mind in spending more money purchasing a product that was grow, grown slower and it makes them feel good, then of course the businesses are going to jump on it and make sure that they have supply to meet this consumer demand. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed my presentation.